Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Prospect Nation 101. My name is Chris Robbins, and today I'm going to take you guys through some Miles Boykin tape. So, this is a guy that I haven't necessarily had my eye on just yet, uh, although today he had a fantastic combine. Uh, he actually started yesterday and the day before during measurements, and uh, he ended up going into the workouts today putting up the highest broad jump, I'm not going to vertical, vertical jump, uh, of any of the receivers in the class. It was like 43.4 or something incredible. Uh, and he had just an overall fantastic day uh, today through all of his workouts. He ended up posting a really nice 9-9 something, I forget the exact number, uh, RAS, so you can find that at MathBomb on Twitter. That's Kent LaPlatt's uh, Twitter account. He does all kinds of good work with that stuff. Uh, so definitely go check that out if you're interested for more of his combine athletic scores. Uh, but main point being for us, he is a QIB qualifier, which means he makes he meets the Lions expectations. I'm a Lions fan. Uh, so that kind of really caught my eye. He's the only full QIB that tested in Indianapolis this week. So uh, definitely someone that kind of really uh, summarizing that all really came up and impressed uh, with a fantastic day today. So we're going to be taking a look at him and seeing if his tape is able to match up or disprove uh, some of those athletic scores. So... Um, Boykin, he did declare early. He's a fourth-year junior from Notre Dame. Uh, also, shout-out to Mark Jarvis for this database. He does a fantastic uh, job with all this stuff as well. I'm at what's on draft NFL, I believe it is. Uh, so definitely go check him out in his uh, Twitter account and his work. He is listed officially, of course. He is an indie as I've said a few times, at 6'3 and 3 quarters, 220, so really good size. Uh, 9 and 7 inch hand, 9 and 7 eighths inch hands, there we go, and 33 and a half inch arms. So, uh, yeah, overall, uh, really good measurements, really, really good athletic testing for those of you guys who didn't watch the actual combine uh, results coming in today. And we're about to find out if his tape can back it up. So, uh, we're just going to be sticking to 2018 tape today. I'll probably end up going back and watching more, uh, depending on where he goes. Uh, also, I forgot to say this, I ended up having to change the title. Uh, Miles Sanders was a QIB qualifier also, so I will be... That will be episode one of the QIB series, and this will be episode number two. Uh, so, uh, for those of you guys who are interested in that, and also while I'm talking about this and getting this all set up, uh, definitely feel free, uh, I highly encourage checking out Eric Schlitz's work, he is at Lionswire, and he does a lot of the, he's the one that le le leads the QIB series, uh, and will be the main go-to guy for uh, all of that stuff and the numbers and things like that, and him and Kent and uh, everyone else in our community work really well together on doing all of that. So, uh, yeah, with that being said, let's just get right into this. So he is number 81, uh, and he does play for Notre Dame. I already said that. This is versus Northwestern. This was week 9 of their schedule, at least. Not necessarily actual week 9. Because of buys. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh dear. I forgot about that. 70, 70, 16. Jeez. Okay, so I'm actually going to put this in fast mode so we can kind of get a feel for his athleticism uh, in real time and see some of that. Because this looks really, really nice for athletic. We'll get to see him here. And yeah, just that burst off the line, the explosion to take the, the yards. Defense gives him a cushion. 
same thing here. He's doing a really nice job, and that again, just kind of confirming those athletic numbers uh, with that quick burst off the line. And most importantly for me, oh, nice, nice separation, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, the the acceleration uh, that he has right off the snap, he seems to really, really get into that top gear very quickly, uh, which is really interesting. And you just see him not even five yards in. He's kind of already at that that second gear. And then, of course, he uses that to create that separation. Uh, so, I believe they'll show another replay of this, right? Yeah, perfect. Okay. So, the first step. Oh, that's a really nice long first stride. Uh, but, what I'm going to be interested in seeing from this angle is how he creates the separation. Boom! Oh, that was a nice lunge step. And he caught the corner turned. Wow, okay. Uh, yeah, that's a really nice job there of using his legs to create that separation. Nice job getting the foot down. Nice catch. Great completion. Find the screen. Oh, nice physical block. That's fun. Okay, they're not going to replay that. All right. Um, yeah, that's obviously there's a shoulder lean block, but again, for me, uh, looking at receivers here, we're not necessarily looking at offensive line guys or even tight ends. Uh, I'm not really too worried about the technique because that kind of thing is a lot easier to coach up for wide receivers and running backs. Uh, and it's, I'm really more so interested in are you willing to block and are you willing to use your body and be physical. Uh, and he does a really nice job here on this play of uh, just showing that willingness to be physical and block here. Here he is at the bottom of the screen. Bam! I think that might even be Patty Fisher, uh, who was a really nice linebacker that is going to be declaring next year. And yeah, he just flattens him. Which is actually, oh, now he ends up going to the edge. But uh, he ended up keeping Patty from, I think that was Patty Fisher, if not the other Notre Dame linebacker, uh, from getting to that edge. So very nice block. And again, the technique may not necessarily be there. But for me, at least looking at what I'm, my base guideline for a receiver block is, are you willing to be physical and are you willing to use your body and, and run blocking? And can you? Uh, run block, and yes. Nice completion to the tight end. Another one. A little bit better form there. Well, not necessarily form, but at least better job of staying centered and things like that. You get to see a little bit more of the angle blocking and him trying to push up uh, to create that lane. And he actually does. He keeps this guy off of him. So, pretty nice play on there. Just to overthrow. Another one. Yeah, he's definitely very willing to be physical. And again, the, the actual like, staying engaged part and all that stuff isn't necessarily complete. You're not getting a complete profile of a blocker. Uh, with him, but for the receiver positioning, I think you definitely have the bases of what you need to see, uh, just not necessarily all of the wants. Oh. Okay, uh, here we go. Nice view of this here. We get to see the full picture. And you see off the line? Mm, not a ton. I like it there. He does use the arms there to create the separation at the top. Just doesn't have the arm length, which is interesting. So that was probably more of a poor throw. Uh, anything. He ended up getting PI for that. I remember that play. I remember watching this game live. This is a really good game. Back on the screen this time. Again, you get to really see the athleticism 
Oh, okay. Uh, hands catch, at least to start. Oh, that was a great play by Hartree. Hartridge? I, I can't exactly see the full name, but whoever number 24 is, starts with the heart. Uh, very nice play on his part to create that, that pass deflection. Because that's a nice hands catch on his part, but once he get, loses that hand, he loses control. So, really nice play by the defender the there to knock that free. Nice release off the line, throwing it to him. Terrible throw. Or PI, depending on what perception you want to look at. That wasn't a great time throw either. Of course, that was also really good coverage. We'll see that here. Yeah, he was under pressure. Bad throw. Top of the screen this time. I do like that they're lining him up on both sides. I really like his short route. Uh, this is a really nice job of, of cutting on those underneath routes. This corner is really flashing though. Number 24, that's a really nice hip movement. He turned quick. Screen pass, get to see some rack. Not a ton of room to work, but he got it, so. Post. I do like that we're seeing him run all three levels, which is nice. Sure, intermediate and deep. Fade over the top, beautiful catch. Complete it, yep, awesome. So here we go, again to see a fade route, some variation, at least a vertical stem. Red zone, technically as well, so it seems to like that part of his game, especially, of course, again, my Lions. Love our red zone areas. Okay, uh, really want to point this out. This is something I've learned a lot about from my receiver bench this year. Watch how he's going to slip through these defenders and avoid the contact here. Recognizes the zone coverage, so he's just going to make a nice little brief, subtle cut outside of the linebacker to avoid that contact. And he's just going to use that to slip through and then hit that impact spot in the zone. Also, nice job high pointing here. Nice to see him go up and get that. Brought it down all the way. Nice inside release there. Oh, nice slippery move there. 83. Nice catch. I think that's a Lizzie Mac. Touchdown. Oh, cool. Okay, here we go. Top of the screen. Pretty simple curl route, but it's nice to see that in his route tree. This Notre Dame offensive line is definitely not as good as it once was. Crazy seeing that. That was a very rough throw. This 24 kick, really doing nice job in coverage this game.
nice out release. He's doing a really nice job of, of uh, winning these outward routes. He's doing a nice job of getting the corners to mostly 24 in this case to sell. Top up screen. Nice inside release there. Nice hands catch. First down. Game 15. And we should get to see a great look at the hands here. Yep. Beautiful. Love that. Keeps in his hands too. That's interesting. Uh, some of these guys, especially I noticed this during gauntlets today. Uh, a lot of these guys really tried to bring these into body quick. And with him, you kind of get a nice extra second look here. He has a really nice shot of keeping the ball in his hands and then brings it tucks it. Really helps complete the process of, and not like the process like going down to the ground, I mean like the actual process of catching the football uh, without dropping it. Well, I guess they're kind of the same thing. So, nice start there for him for sure. We definitely did get to see uh, in regular motion the uh, athletic traits that we saw in the combine today. Uh, but we also got to see some of the uh, hands that we wanted to see. And the one thing that we don't get to see in Indianapolis from the receivers is the blocking. And we did get to see the willingness and the physicality uh, in the blocking. Not so much the technique, uh, but that willingness to block and that physicality, the willingness to be physical with the defender. Uh, even a linebacker in his case, uh, which was really nice to see. So... Good start to the tape for him. Now we head to Stanford. And I will keep, well, I'm going to pause this, but I will keep this on full speed. Nice hands again. And just really nice separation on the first shot. I'll replay in case you missed it. We're just going to start at the top of the screen here. And just a nice little outward move with good hands. Inside, okay. So we get to see a little bit more of that alignment. And I also really like his blocking here. Uh, you get to see a little bit more of the technique and this engagement here uh, than we did in the last game, which is nice. Of course, this is a defensive back. It looks like a safety or at least a smaller linebacker. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind too. Top of the screen. Oh, I like that burst. And yeah, again, once you gave him that space off the line, he's just going to take and exploit that. Watch how this corner comes inside a little bit here on a blitz. And he notices that right away and just completely takes off. Almost to the point of slipping. Top of the screen. Bottom this time. I like that recognition there. Really nice route. Not, again, flashy or anything. It wasn't like a super fantastic slant, but uh, he definitely did some nice job of running this to create that separation. Maximize that. Right here, he realizes that he's playing a bit sh soft, well, by a bit, I mean a lot soft, and, uh, of course, it was a run play anyway. A gang inside, so we're getting to see a little bit of slot work. Nice catch. And here we go, I get to slow this one down as well. Nice burst off the line. Nice job again, trying to get around the contact. Nice round cut here. That's a designed round cut, it looks like. Nice job tracking this ball all the way in. Getting the hands up. Finishing the play. Nice. Bottom of the screen. 
I like to line him up at X, Y, and Z. We're getting to see him at all three spots, which is very nice to see. And I talked about this on the Harmon tape, which I'm actually literally in the process of posting right now. Uh, where we got to see very, very minimal, if any, positional alignment uh, in terms of formation. Oh, man, there's physicality there. And, uh, yeah, so anyway, got to see very little in terms of uh, variation of alignment. And with him, we're getting to see that. Uh, we're getting to see him at the slot, at the Y, uh, and as well as both the X and the Z on each side. So, very nice. And an ISO, too. Four wide set ISO. And he makes the catch. So, definitely a lot of versatility as far as alignment go, which is, alignments go, which is nice. Oh. Oh, he almost had that too. Again, inside screen. That was a very weird play, but okay. Very inside. Okay, uh, they definitely set him up. This must be a screen, and he's blocking. Yeah. They ran him inside at the tight end. Jeez, okay. Uh, I don't think 82 is a receiver. I'd have to look for sure. But if that is a tight end, if that's the backup to Elysian Mac, they just lined Boykin inside of him. That's pretty crazy. Again, I really like the use of the angle there. Definitely showing a little bit more of the technical side of blocking this game. Nice to see my screen. Still very little room to go, but the room that he did have, he did take. So nice to see that after the catchability. And again, not the flashiest Odell-like slant, uh, but this is the kind that you're getting on day three, and that's why. He's not going to be your fanciest route runner of all time. Uh, but he still does create that separation, at least in, in the college level. And those are some things, again, that when you get to, to the NFL level with your receivers coach, you'll be able to refine and work out some things. So that will be very healthy, uh, helpful to him. And yeah, like a little bit more rounded on the slant, but I, it was enough to create that separation and, and get him hands on the football ball. On the screen. Nice out cut. Nice job going for the simple possession catch there. Nice out again. Same thing. Just excellent positioning. Deeper out route. Nice hands catch. And there's the rack ability. Can make a guy miss. So, getting to see that three phase play start to develop with him a little bit here. Uh, the flashiness with that. And that's kind of what I wanted to see a little bit more of, was can he start off with the release? Can he create that separation? And then can he finish and hopefully get some yak tech, top, tech, ah, tacked onto that? Um, and this is one of those plays where he does that. He gets off the line very quick with that initial burst, the athleticism. Of course, it's soft coverage. Creates that separation from 27. And makes the catch with the hands. And then the finish of the play keeps it going, stays in bounds simply. But beyond that, he goes for the extra yardage after the catch. Uh, so one of those three-phase full plays. And that's kind of what you want to see a lot of with him. So that's really nice. He definitely flashes at the very least. I'm in the screen this time. And yeah, you got to see him stay a little bit more engaged. I like, again, I talked about this with Harmon too, but I'm going to point this out again for those of you guys who didn't see the Harmon video uh, or aren't predicting what I'm going to talk about yet. I really do like how on this play it looks like to, at least it's designed to go to the right side. He's on the bottom of the screen here, 
and he's still willingly physically blocking. Uh, it's really nice to see him do that. He doesn't necessarily give up on the play because they're not running at him. Just a little minor observation note, but it speaks to motor and character. And there's more, and this time he kind of finishes a little bit, right? So you're not just going to see him pancake the guy and knock him over, but you're also going to see that second effort on the block. So keep that in mind here. I need to slow this down. No, okay. I don't think so. Right here, right? You see the first initial punch here. Really nice. But then right here, he gets his hands back on him when he didn't when he doesn't get knocked down. So it's more about that motor and that consistent effort and keeping him out of the play. Whereas in the first video, he kind of caught that guy a couple times by surprise, the linebacker, uh, and knocked him over. So he didn't really have to finish or anything like that. And he's not an offensive lineman. He's not going to jump on top of the guy and, and pin him or anything. Uh, but he knocked him down, took his guy out of the play. Here, he doesn't exactly do that. He doesn't have this strong enough bubble punch to knock this guy over. And he ends up doing what he needed to do on this play and stay with him. So, that's nice to see. Bottom of the screen. I like how he uses his hands at the release. Doesn't create a ton of separation with it, though. Motion. I forgot to point that out in the Harmon video. Oh well. Bottom of the screen this time. Nice drag underneath. Get to see that three levels of work. We've got to see him exploit all three levels too, which is nice. Top. Oh, nice burst. And again, I, the something that you look really like here is I like how he bursts on the blocking place too, right? So he's not just going to be exploding off the line on a regular, normal play, like a receiving play. He also has that same really nice get off and burst and acceleration on a blocking play. Watch how he gets off the line here. Boom, just really quick, and he catches the, the corner by surprise with his blocking, and that wasn't even necessarily toward his side. So, speaks to the motor and the effort in the, in the run blocking department, which is fantastic. Bottom of the screen. Third down, clutch game. Nice hands release. Very nice. Like this. So again, what I, whoops, what I really want to focus on here is can he win at the line with his hands? Something that we hadn't really seen a lot of in the Northwestern game, but we do here. So watch. Slow this down real quick. What we're going to see is he, at this line of scrimmage, right off the snap, he's going to have to utilize his hands a little bit. Right here. Gets his arm on the elbow. Very nice. Good positioning with the hand. It swipes over the top. Really nice quick swipe, too. The fact that you can barely see that in slow-mo uh, says quite a bit about the quickness of the swipe. Nice arm extension here at the end of the route. Creates just enough separation. Gets his hands up late, which is at times in situations like this where you need that extra second to create separation. Can be a good thing. You don't necessarily need your hands up for 10 seconds, but at the same time, he didn't and he, there's different ways to save the corner is what I'm trying to say. And this way, he uh, waited. He, he was patient, waiting for the ball. Uh, he got the hands up, reeled it in, nice possession catch. So, overall, again, not necessarily the complete finish to the play, but you got to see that opening with the uh, release off the line. And then you got to see the uh, third phase with the catch. The second phase of the separation wasn't exactly ideal, but... I'm on the screen. Nice hands catch. That was a terrible spot. 
Okay, so another thing, minor detail, but mental IQ awareness type deal. Look at where he is, be a high in the line of scrimmage on third down. Very nice football IQ and awareness. Which is why he should have gotten the first down. He very, very clearly extended that. That should undoubtedly be a first down. Yeah, oh, that's clearly, especially the tip of the ball, very clearly behind the first down marker. Without a doubt. Right there. Oh, there is no way you're telling me that that is short of the first down marker. <laughs> if they ruled him short, that's a complete joke. Okay, they gave it to him. Good. Oh! Ah, oh, he dropped it at the end, though. Okay, nice job of singing himself. Nice rack on the screen. Great finish here. Boom. Oh, that little bit of burst. That first step is really, really nice. Watch right here. You're going to see him with a nice boom. Burst first step. Gets across very quickly behind his blockers. Nice patient hands. And just takes it in. Fantastic. I love that rack. Oh, tons of separation. They left him wide open. So, uh, there you go. There's Miles Boykin. He is the only, at this point, QIB qualifier going into pro days. Uh, and overall, he had a very nice day today. And uh, you get to see some of those things going back and looking at tape uh, that we saw today. You got to see that burst, that opening end athleticism. Uh, so that was really nice to see. Uh, you get to see the the hands as well. He had a pretty good gauntlet, if I remember correctly. Uh, so that's nice to see uh, that get confirmed. And uh, the blocking, the thing that we didn't get to see that we may have had questions about uh, on tape, that you can only really find on tape for receivers, uh, not technically particularly sound, uh, but he does have that physicality and the willingness to block Enough to where you can definitely get him going on the technical side. So, uh, with that being said, uh, definitely a very good watch. Hopefully, you guys, uh, go back and if you want to watch the LSU tape yourselves, obviously go ahead. That's from last year. I won't pay too much attention to that yet. Uh, but definitely uh, a big fan of what we saw today for sure at both the combine and some of the de details that we just went over on tape. But for now, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow us on Twitter at Prospect Central 101. Pro, well, actually, at Pro Central 101. Uh, but Prospect Central 101 is the name. Uh, and as well as the other guys I mentioned, Mark Jarvis, does, who did the database, uh, Eric Schlitt, for those of you Lions fans who are tuning in and paying attention to the QIB side, or um, Kent LaPlatt, who does all the RIS work and the athletic scores and the combine. All that fun stuff. So definitely give them a follow and, and all that as well. But for now, hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Peace out.